In this video, you will learn how to set up your first Pinterest ads step by step. Let's jump right in. So the first thing that you will need to do is make sure that you have a Pinterest business account set up. If you don't know how to do that, just Google Pinterest ads and then come here to Pinterest ads. It'll take you to view like this where you can hit get started and it will walk you through how to set up your account. Once that's set up, it'll be taken to a view that looks something like this where you can click on this create campaign button and then hit create campaigns and it will take you to the view that I am seeing right here. That's very easy to set up your account. It takes just a few minutes. Now it's going to ask you if you want to do run an automated campaign or a manual campaign. Most people I recommend running the manual campaign. The automated campaign just automates a lot of things and kind of gives you less options for targeting. And I found better results with the manual campaign because you have more control on where your ads are showing. So we're going to go with the manual campaign and it says 10 to 60 minutes here, but that's just not true. We can do it in much less than that. We're going to hit manual, and especially because you're following this tutorial. Now, once we get here, it's going to ask for you to choose a campaign objective. There's either build awareness, drive consideration, or get conversions. Honestly, for most people, I would not recommend anybody running any build awareness just completely ignore this bucket. Now for majority of people, you're going to want to drive consideration or get conversions. This is optimizing for people to click on the ad and go to your website. The get conversions is optimizing to actually get a sale or to get somebody to click to buy a specific product on your catalog. Now for this tutorial, we're going to mainly focus on this action right here because these two require you to set up the Pinterest pixel. I actually go through the full setup of this in a full hour long plus advanced kind of Pinterest tutorial. If you want to check that out right there, you can do that. It's 100% free and I don't try to like upcharge you or anything. It's just a complete course there. But we're going to be starting with this consideration here. And we're going to click on this button to drive people to our website. Now, as we scroll down here, it's going to ask for a campaign name. Generally, I just like to call this prospecting. And then I will either have it be consideration, whatever objective I chose or conversions or catalog sales here. You can name this whatever you want, though. That's just how I personally like to name this. And we want the campaign statics to be active here, of course. And then for the budget type, I prefer a daily budget. You can do a lifetime budget if you wanted to. And you can see here, this is actually a performance plus daily. And you can see you could have a fixed daily or a performance plus you see the performance plus may spend more on some days but less on others to maximize the opportunity but it will stay maintain your daily average budget so if you say that you are spending ten dollars some days it may spend twelve dollars in that month and some days it may spend only eight so i do recommend keeping the performance plus daily on there if you're really strict on the budget though you could just do a fixed daily so only spend the maximum amount of that ten dollars there now when it comes to budgets a lot of the questions i get is like what budget should i start with i would say the budget that you're most comfortable with to begin with but if you really wanted to optimize it i would recommend spending three to five x your your average cost of your the item that you're trying to sell. So if you're trying to sell bracelets for $10, I would generally recommend spending three to five times more than that. So if your bracelet was $10, I would recommend a budget of $30 to begin with. That's going to give you the best chance to actually get those conversions coming through. However, I do understand that sometimes you just want to start different things. So I've started campaigns as little as $5 a day, as campaigns as little as $10 a day, and as high as, you know, hundred thousands a day as they kind of get optimized. So choose whatever budget is best for you, but that's just a general rule of thumb. We want to run our ads continuously. You can set a specific run dates in between here, but most of the time I run them continuously. If you're somebody who forgets that you turn on ads and forgets to turn them off or check them, then I would set specific dates here. But generally, if the ad is performing, I like to run it continuously. That way I can keep it running without it automatically turning off. So we're going to hit continue here on this. And then it's going to ask for the ad group name, which I actually like to come back afterwards and name the ad group after I've selected the targeting here. When it comes to Pinterest, there are three different targeting options. And generally, if you're just beginning and getting started, I would probably recommend starting with this one right here, find new customers. But I do want to go through briefly what these three do here. So the first one is reconnect with you. Users. So this is things like customer list, engagement, site visitors, or dynamic remarketing. So if you select this option, you'll have to select an audience source. And then it's a lot of like remarketing or customer lists that you'll have to upload. The one down here is choose your own. So this is where you can also upload customer list, site engagement, and dynamic retargeting. So it requires you to pull another data source. A lot of times this means having the pixel set up or importing lists. But for this one in the middle, this is nice because we can use Pinterest predefined audiences. And Pinterest has a lot of data on people. So we can target people really granularly on this. So we're going to select this option right here. And then you you can see even inside of here, there are multiple ways that you can target people. So you can target people based on interest and keywords, demographics, and then placements and tracking. So I'm going to click here on the interest and keywords. And you can see here we have a couple of different options. So you can see here, there are these two different boxes checked. And I generally recommend if you're just beginning keeping these both checked, this is going to enable interest and keywords. And then it's also going to enable performance plus targeting. What this is going to do is it's going to take the suggestions that you give Pinterest, and then it will also use the data that they have to also find audiences that would be adjacent to that as well. You can test this in your own account. Some accounts, I find that it works well. And sometimes I see that it doesn't as much. So this is something that you can test. But if you're just beginning, keep those both checked. Now here is where we can actually add interest. So I'm going to be selling a tripod here, just a little phone tripod. So what I like to do is I like to just start by typing in my keyword here or the product and seeing what options are available. So you can see right here, I have electronics and electronics cameras and accessories. So electronics is probably a little bit too broad for what I would be doing with this tripod. But I do like this cameras and accessories interest. So we're going to click on that. And then you can see it will give me an idea of the weekly clicks that I can get and the CPC for that 
specific area and the monthly audience user. So about 85 million in this specific one. Now, if you wanted to test different things, you could, you can click on all of these, or you could also come down here and you could drop down on all these little drop downs and see what is inside of event planning, maybe gifts and then gift basket, gifts wraps. And you can just look through all these manually. Or like I said, you can search the specific interest. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can target specific keywords. Now, what I've found with Pinterest is sometimes a lot of these keywords don't really give you like a ton of data. Like you can see here for tripod, like there actually isn't anything to target, which I think is kind of lame on Pinterest part, to be honest, because I feel like they have enough data where they could target like a keyword like this. So you may have to get more broad for your keywords. We may have to go here, camera, and then look at what of the things that are inside of camera here and look at all of the different ones and see maybe what is better for us. So I'm going to look at this. Look at all these cameras here. Okay, and you see, I couldn't find anything for camera accessories, but this is actually a phone tripod, so it may be better for me to go phone accessories for iPhone. So now I just have a couple of keywords here, and for this example, I'm not gonna spend too much time going through and looking for more keywords, but you can see for best results, they do recommend a minimum of 25 keywords inside of here. If you're also using interest, then you probably need less here because my audience is still around 85, but you can see I added those keywords and it didn't really move the needle on how many active monthly searches there are. So the better way to do, to get like a broad audience is from the interest-based targeting, so just keep that in mind. And one thing that they have added recently, which is nice, you can suggest a specific interest if you aren't seeing the one that you want here. They are taking some feedback. So if you don't find yours, you can submit it there. And then maybe in the coming months, it will be inside of Pinterest. Now, after you have the interest-based targeting, you can come over here to the demographics and you can choose the gender that you wanted to target, the age, location. I'm going to be just targeting US. So I'm going to do that here, but you can take a specific location. You can do languages and then also devices here. And another important thing here is the placements. Now I would recommend being on both browse and search. If you wanted to go completely search, you could do that. But generally for the best performance, I recommend being on both. The difference between these is when you're inside of Pinterest and you're just scrolling on your home feed, that's the browse. If you search something specific like a chicken recipe, that is a search based placement. Now, once we are done with our targeting, what I like to do is come back up here and actually rename the ad group now. So I have this USA interested in camera accessories. You want to be as descriptive as possible with this ad group. If you're only running one ad or one campaign, then it's not too hard to remember what you built. But as you start to build out tens or hundreds of different campaigns, then this becomes really important. So now we have the ad group named and then we can scroll down here and actually come to the ads. Now, when it comes to ads, you have three different options. You can either select a pin from your current profile profile, you can create an ad or you can create an idea ad. So if I select a pin from my profile, you can see it's going to grab all the pins that are currently on my profile. I can click here, use one of these as a specific ad. So I can grab this, add this pin here, and then you can see it will show you what this looks like. This one has kind of a blurry thing. And then you can give this a specific name. You can give it a destination. You can preview the URL here as well. And then you can add tracking URLs. That's a little bit more advanced thing. You don't need to worry about that if you aren't interested in the ad tracking. And then from here, you can then preview on the iPhone. It will send you a link and then you can publish it. But I want to go back and show you the other options here. So if I don't want to run one from my selected pins, I can click delete here. And then here is where we can actually go through and create a specific ad. So inside of here, you can see you can click on this, it will drag and drop something into your you got to have a video ready. Of course, you can grab one of these and import it into this. And then inside of here, what I like is you can run this as an ad only. So if you didn't want it to post to your organic profile and show there, then you will want to check that box. So it's only shows on an ad and doesn't show up on your profile. But if you wanted to run your board, you could do that. And then from here, you would need to go through and select a board that you want it to be on. But generally, I'm going to just keep this as an ad. And then you can give this a pin title, like tripod, best tripod, you know, whatever you wanted this to be. And then give it also like a very good description. Keep in mind, you do want to keep keywords inside of here. I'm not gonna go through and write a full description for this, but you kind of get the idea. It's just basically like describing the product and what it does. Right here, you can actually tag specific products if you have your catalog attached. But this is a little bit more of an advanced thing. If you wanted best practices for your Pinterest ads and like what actually works, in my full tutorial, I go through all of that and I even have slides and examples of ads. But for here, I'm just wanting to show you how to get an ad up as quickly as possible. And then last, you need to add your destination link. So this is like www. Add your website there. And then you can then publish that specific ad. The third option is to create an idea ad, which is a little bit different, just a standard ad. And inside of here, you can actually create a new one. We're going to drag in that same video and you can make some customizations to this. So the big difference between this is once you have your video inside of here, you can add text inside of here. So if I wanted to say like awesome or best tripod, based basically, you can put that in that side there, you can change the font of this, you can change the alignment, the color of it as well. And then you can kind of just add some different designs on it. Honestly, I rarely use this option, because if I'm going to do a kind of video, I'll just create it inside another platform and then upload it in there. But just wanted to let you know that this is an option as well. So we're going to exit out of this. Now, once you have selected your specific pin, so we're going to come back here, we're just going to use this one as an example, then you can scroll down here. And sometimes it does this where it doesn't let you scroll down. So refresh the page. I don't know why it does that. And then resume your editing 
editing. And then now you got to come back over here and then hit continue. And then now we have these options here. You want to give your ad a name and then the destination URL, you'll learn more. And then you can publish this specific ad and congratulations, your ad will be live in about 24 to 48 hours. Now we covered a lot in this tutorial, but there is more advanced strategies that you can learn and things to get even better results with your ads. If you want to learn more about Pinterest ads, you can check out this full 100% free course. As I mentioned, I don't try to upsell you into like another course or anything like that. This is just a full hour long plus course that will teach you basically everything that you need to know to get started with Pinterest ads. So hopefully we'll see you in that next tutorial.